Hello friends, this is Bethany. Thank you for stopping by Joyful Habits. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day and I'm so grateful that you chose to spend some of that day with me. Today, we are going to be trying five fall-inspired drinks. They're all pumpkin and some are hot and some are cold. Why, you might ask, or you might not ask. Either way, I'm gonna tell you. The other day, I stepped out into what truly felt like the most perfect autumn day and the first, like, true autumn day that we've had of the season. No longer that warm summer breeze, but now that cool, crisp wind. The sky was a perfectly vibrant blue. The colorful leaves were starting to come out. Leaves were fluttering to the ground and Needless to say, I got very excited, and I got very inspired. And when I get excited and inspired, this is what happens. So yeah, I'm so happy you're here today. Let's dive right in. Okay, so first up, who doesn't love a delicious cup of hot chocolate? This was definitely one of my favorites. This hot chocolate came out so creamy and rich and just delightful. I will definitely be making this one again. So all you need to do is add milk, Cool Whip, a chocolate of your choice. I used milk chocolate here, but you can definitely use dark chocolate or any chocolate that you enjoy. cocoa powder, pumpkin puree, and a little bit of pumpkin spice. Oh, and just a little bit of maple syrup. Add all of this to a small saucepan and heat it on your stove over low heat. Make sure you stir it pretty frequently just so you don't burn anything. And if you want to recreate any of these, definitely check out the description box below. I'll have all the recipes and measurements there. Okay, so this pumpkin hot chocolate is already delightful, but we are going to add a creamy topping. Instead of just putting a dollop of whipped cream on top, we're going to combine Cool Whip, pumpkin puree, cinnamon, nutmeg, and mix it all together. Now you could definitely just mix this together by hand or with a spoon or a whisk. Well, not with your hand, but using your hand, hold a spoon or a whisk, you get it. But if you have it, um, a handheld frother works really nicely and I found this one online for like $8, so they're not that expensive. And I did end up adding a tiny bit of milk just to thin it out a bit. And then I also decided to add a tiny bit of maple syrup for sweetness. And in case you couldn't tell, I am making this up as I go, but it turned out really good, so you can't be afraid to try new things. And just look how yummy that looks, and not just looks, it tasted delicious too. So I pulled out this adorable pumpkin mug that I have and poured in my hot chocolate and then topped it with our cream mixture.
Like I said, this was definitely one of my favorites. So creamy and smooth and the flavors were just perfect. I was really happy with how this one turned out. Like I said, I was kind of making it up as I went, so I wasn't entirely sure how it was gonna go, but I now have a new recipe that I will be making over and over this fall season. This is the perfect dessert to cozy up with on those chilly autumn evenings. Okay, so we've made a cozy hot drink for those cold autumn evenings, but what if you're still experiencing warm weather or you just prefer cold drinks? Well, we're gonna try making a pumpkin cold brew. First up, we're gonna make the creamer for our coffee. Mix together some half and half or heavy cream, milk, vanilla, I used vanilla paste, pumpkin puree, cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, and a little bit of maple syrup. Again, you could whisk this together by hand, but I find that the frother adds a really nice airiness to it. Okay, now you're gonna choose whatever glass you wanna use. I have a regular water glass here, but what I did is I put it in the freezer for a little bit just to make it look cool. Cool, pun not intended. Ah, but anyway, to make it look cool and to keep the drink chilled. The other fun thing I did for this was to make some coffee ice cubes. All I did was brew up a cup of coffee and pour it into an ice cube tray, and that's that. But, because this is Joyful Habits, and around here we can't resist adding just a touch of whimsy, I couldn't stop there. So what I did is I found some pumpkin molds and I made pumpkin-shaped coffee ice cubes. Totally not necessary, but totally fun, and I really love how they look. And then you're just gonna grab your cold brew. And I've had this in my fridge for a little under 24 hours, I would say. And then we're gonna just top it all off with the creamer we made. I love how this looks. The colors are beautiful and it just looks really delicious. And yeah, this came out great. I think I will add just a little bit more pumpkin next time and maybe some pumpkin spice, just because I really like a strong pumpkin flavor. And of course you can adjust the coffee to creamer ratio based on your personal preference. Overall, a great recipe though, especially if you wanna feel those autumn vibes, but it's just a little too warm out to have a hot cup of coffee. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're heading into the realm of classic coffee. We've made a fancy cold brew and some lovely hot chocolate, but what about just a good old cup of coffee? Small confession, I don't actually drink that much coffee, but I do love the smell of it and I still think it's a nice drink. I'm curious if you are a coffee lover or if you're not, do you still enjoy the smell of coffee? A lot of people I've talked to, they say they find the smell of coffee very pleasant even if they don't enjoy the taste. Okay, and for this recipe, we're going to need milk, pumpkin puree, brown sugar, pumpkin pie spice, vanilla, Cool Whip, and of course coffee. I'll be taking whole coffee beans and grinding them in a fresh ground coffee, but you can use whatever coffee you have on hand. Now first up, we're going to make the cream topping by combining milk, Cool Whip, vanilla paste, cinnamon, and pumpkin puree together, and then mixing it up. I'm using my frother again, but as I said before, you can use a whisk or a spoon or a frother if you have it. Now for our coffee, like I said, I'll be grinding up fresh coffee, but it's definitely not necessary. You can just brew up a pot of coffee however you normally would. But I wanted to go the extra mile for you guys in this video, and I think it looks really nice. Okay, we now have our freshly ground coffee beans. It smells wonderful in here right now. I think coffee is just such a cozy and inviting smell. But anyway, now that we have our coffee grounds, let's go ahead and make a cup of coffee. I'm using this pour over, so all you have to do if you have one of these is add your coffee grounds to the strainer and then pour hot water slowly over top. And then we just wait for the water to drip through and become coffee. I guess it was always coffee, but liquid coffee, coffee extract, different form of coffee, you get it. And when you're left with just the wet coffee grounds, you can pull the strainer out and now you have your pitcher of coffee. Okay, so we have our cream topping, we have our coffee, but we still have one more component to this coffee drink. In a small saucepan, combine milk, pumpkin, brown sugar, and pumpkin pie spice together, then heat on the stove, stirring frequently.
we just put it all together. Now, of course, you can adjust the ratios of cream and coffee to your liking, um, but you're just going to pour your coffee and then add your milk mixture and then top it all off with the cream. And I sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon on top for an added finish. This recipe came out really nicely, and I think it's a wonderful, festive cup of coffee. I am really excited for this one. I had a lot of fun making this. We are making a pumpkin pie milkshake. Now you're gonna need a blender. I'm using the large cup for my Nutribullet just because it's easy and I'm only making one serving. But you can use a large blender or just anything you have that blends. This recipe is very simple. We're just going to start by adding our vanilla ice cream to the blender. And along with the ice cream, we're going to add a little bit of milk, pumpkin puree, and pumpkin pie spice. And then you're going to blend it up until you have something that looks like this. And that's it. That's your pumpkin pie milkshake. But to add a little more, I have this fun milkshake glass. And I'm going to line the inside of the milkshake glass with some melted caramel. If you're not a fan of caramel, you can omit this, but I think the caramel and the pumpkin flavors complement each other really nicely. And it looks really pretty as well. And now you just add your pumpkin milkshake. I decided to top it with a little whipped cream. Okay, maybe a little too much whipped cream. I was trying to make it pretty by looping around in circles, but I made one too many whipped cream circles and now the structural integrity is definitely questionable. But it is still delicious, and in the end, that's kind of all I care about. Then I just sprinkled some graham cracker crumbs on top as a garnish. The original recipe did call for ground up graham cracker to be mixed into the milkshake. I decided not to do that. Um, I just wanted to put a little on top as a garnish. And adding a fun straw, and our milkshake is done. This milkshake looks adorable, and it was delicious. Again, I think the caramel and pumpkin flavors really blend well together. And this is a great way to still enjoy your ice cream and milkshake desserts, but feeling festive for the autumn season.
our final drink is a pumpkin chai tea. We've made coffees, we've made chocolate drinks, ice cream, but what about tea? I personally am a huge tea drinker and I love to buy bulk herbs and make my own tea blends or cut up some raw ginger and make a ginger tea with honey and I also enjoy the many varieties of tea that you can find at the store. But when it comes to the colder months, I definitely think of a good chai tea. There are so many warm and beautiful spices and when I smell a good chai tea, I definitely think of autumn. So again, we are making our cream topping first. We're gonna add together some Cool Whip, vanilla, cinnamon, and mix it all together and set it aside. In a small saucepan, we're going to heat up our milk. I'm using creamy oat milk. Adding to that maple syrup. And some pumpkin. Once that is heated, we're going to add our tea. I just bought some chai tea bags at the store, but you could use black tea and add the spices in yourself. And now you're just gonna let your tea bag steep. I used two tea bags and I'm also letting them steep a good 20 minutes. If you prefer your tea to not be as strong, just use less tea bags and steep it for less time. And now that it's done, we're going to pour our tea into our mug of choice and top it with our cream mixture. I found this fun pack of fall inspired coffee stencils and I thought it would be really fun to try them out. So we're going to use this stencil and some cinnamon to put a cute little pumpkin on top of our pumpkin chai tea. Now you may already see where this is going but at the time I did not see where it was going. So yeah, I set the stencil, sprinkled my cinnamon and created a beautiful blob of cinnamon just sitting um, in a pile on top of my tea. So yeah, that was a major fail. It was at this point that my brain turned back on and I realized that because of the gap between the stencil and the top of my drink that of course it would just fall through the holes in the stencil and the cinnamon would land in any way that it felt. And my cinnamon did not feel like landing in the shape of a pumpkin. So yeah. I now have a very cinnamony <laughs> chai tea. But to prove a point, and because I had been really excited to use this stencil, I decided to lay the stencil on the cutting board and try again. And this time it worked, it worked perfectly. So yeah, just use your imagination and picture this perfect little pumpkin on top of my chai tea. But despite my pumpkin failures, this chai tea was amazing. I know I said the hot chocolate was my favorite, but this one definitely challenges that. I couldn't stop sneaking little sips of this one, which I had to try and control myself because I had to take pretty pictures and videos to show you guys, but I wanted to just drink this right up. It was so good. The flavors are cozy and delicious, and if you enjoy chai tea, I would definitely give this one a try. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun with this and enjoyed some tasty drinks as well. And I've got to say, I was going over my list of ideas earlier, ideas for this channel, and I now have over 17 pages of ideas. And I'm not talking sloppy notes. I'm talking 17 typed size 12 font Word document pages on my computer just filled with some really fun ideas. And I'm just so excited for what's to come and I can't wait to get to them all. You know, talking to the internet can be really scary, but I'm so happy that I finally took the jump and found the courage to start this YouTube channel. And I'm so beyond happy that you found me and you're here to share in the fun. 
I'm so excited for where this channel is headed and I'm just really having fun with it. And I think, and I hope anyway, that I'm improving just a little bit with each video and offering up content that truly enriches your life in some way. Like I say, when you watch my videos, I'm hoping that you learn something or you become inspired or walk away with a smile. And I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. So yeah, I just wanted to say hello and thank you for finding me and sticking around. And I hope you're doing okay and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. So with that being said, my name is Bethany and this has been Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. I cannot wait for you to join me in my next video and until then, keep smiling. Bye.